Um, you've known for a couple of days that I really wanted to have this conversation and we both go into totally serious mode about it because uh, last Thursday was Holocaust Memorial Day and it's a profoundly personal mission for you, isn't it? It certainly is. And uh, that came about, actually, Elle, after you and I uh, stopped working together. I was a subject of one of the BBC's amazing programmes, Who Do You Think You Are?, where I discovered that many members of my father's family were murdered by the Nazis in Belarus. It was uh, an extraordinary experience. I mean, absolutely traumatic beyond belief, but also to have a television camera as you discover all this about your family. But as a consequence of that, um, about a year after that program was broadcast in 2014, when David Cameron was prime minister, I was invited to be part of a new Holocaust commission uh, that he was establishing, essentially trying to work out what this country needs to do better to memorialise one of the darkest hours in history. Mm. And um, that ended up with me volunteering as the only journalist on the board uh, to interview uh, 112 Holocaust survivors. Uh, who had never before shared their extraordinary experience. Um, and it was honestly one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, but also the greatest honour. Yeah, I, I, I'll come to the detail of that in a moment, but I'll take you back to that to the brilliant programme, Who Do You Think You Are? And, and it had a similar impact on, on, on our mutual friend, uh, Rob Rinder. Um, Stephen Fry was aghast and said, you know, I might not have been here had my grandfather not fled uh, and been helped out. Your dad's a lovely guy, and, and I, I, I so admired him. Did he not talk about it? Did he not know about it? Yes, he did to a degree, but I think it's um, a fairly um, it's it's fairly standard that those that are involved in it generally try to hide the trauma from their families as a way of protecting them and facilitating growth yeah. and moving forwards and towards the end of people's lives um, who are involved in the Holocaust. Certainly, the survivors that I met there was this almost panic that, you know, that they suddenly realised that they didn't have long left on this earth and they really wanted something positive to have come out of uh, such a, a, a hugely horrific yeah. experience for them. And many of the survivors I spoke to um, said it was the last thing they wanted to do before they died and a number of them went on to die very soon after the interviews. And what's so sad is, you know, every year that passes, uh, fewer and fewer of them are still alive to tell their tale. And so that's why it felt so important to you know, conduct those interviews. It took 15 months. It was hugely traumatic for everybody involved, but it feels like a very important piece of history to have documented. Mm -hmm.